Hi, today we've got hopefully what is a repair video of this Bosch GX150 Turbo Sander. And I say hopefully because I really want to get this sander back up and running. It's one of my favourites. Um, this one is a random orbit sander, but it also has a forced rotation mode. So you can switch between the two modes with this lever just here. And basically, in normal random orbit mode, it does random orbits and rotates a little bit. But in the forced rotation mode, it forces a circular motion. You can take away a lot of material should you need to using that mode. So I do want to get this working, uh, but I was using it the other day. And then all of a sudden it went bang in my hands. Loads and loads of smoke came out the back of this. Uh, you can see uh, there's a bit of damage potentially to the speed control wheel. But I see some metal here, which is potentially just a suppression capacitor or something like that. Uh, I didn't plug it in again to see if it worked. It happened to trip the MCB for the circuit that it was plugged into. So um, I haven't turned it on to see whether there's further damage. Um, but there are spare parts available for every part of this machine. Hopefully we can do a repair without ordering any parts, but we'll see once we get the thing to pieces. So first of all, with this device, we need to remove the dust extraction port and then we can undo the screw at the back here to remove this back section where all of the electronics is. And yeah, it does look like this suppression capacitor here is what has exploded. Let's take a closer look. So it's this suppression unit that seems to have gone bang. I was hoping it was just a plain capacitor, but there's more to it than that. There's actually five leads going into this little potted device. And you can see all of the stuff that's blown out of this end here. So it looks like it's got some metallized capacitors in there. These are the various probably paper layers based on what it looks like with metallized coating on it. Um, and you can see inside the cap here, there's more in there. Um, you can see all of the soot and everything from where it went bang. It really, really went off when it blew up and it was just smoking uh, for quite a period of time. So it built up a lot of heat in a very short period of time. You can see all of the charring all over here. So this is going to need a proper clean out, probably with the air compressor. Um, but the brushes have got plenty of life in them. You can see all of the brush material up here. So it's not worth replacing any of the other parts. I think I'm just going to try and order this one part and replace that. The speed control appears to be completely intact so hopefully we don't need to replace that because that's a slightly more expensive part. Still not ridiculously expensive, I think it's about £40 or something like that but the um, everything else I think looks like it's all in order. Now one of the reasons I really like Bosch power tools is that the spare parts are really easily available. Even for quite old power tools, you can still get them for ones that are 20 years old now. Uh, but this is the exploded parts diagram for the GEX150 Turbo. And it's item number 12 that's failed here. This is the suppression unit with the five leads on it. And it shows where to connect all of these leads when we get the spare part in. So we don't have to take any photos of the current setup. We can just follow this parts diagram once we get the spare part in. And I think I'm going to order the suppression capacitor that was next to it as well. Because if this one started to fail, then this one is probably not that far behind. So number 90 and number 12. So number 12 is the suppression filter here. £13.46. And number 90 is another suppression filter. £9.70. So I'm going to get those two parts ordered. And then we'll try and get this thing back up and running. So whilst we wait for those parts to arrive, let's talk about some very exciting news from our sponsor for this video, JLC PCB. So they now offer some new options for PCB assembly. Originally, we were restricted to single-sided placement of parts and also uh, restrictions as to how many layers, PCB thicknesses, and the color of the PCB. And that's still the case if you choose the economic PCBA option, but they now have a new option, standard PCBA, and it basically unlocks all of the options. So you can pick any color for the PCB, you can pick any number of PCB layers from one to six layers, and you can also get your parts placed on both sides of the PCB. And they've also extended the number of PCBs that you can get assembled, which means that you can actually get your PCBs mass manufactured here for very economic prices. And that means that if you are starting to sell your own products, you can get them made for a very attractive price. 
So don't forget to visit JLC PCB. Uh, the links are in the description if you're thinking about getting some PCBs assembled. So these parts arrived pretty quickly, however I thought it was worth a quick explanation as to what they're actually doing inside this power tool. Now this sander uses a AC universal motor, very similar to most AC powered um, hand tools. And a universal motor is very similar to a DC permanent magnet motor. So what you have is a motor armature with two brushes. Uh, but instead of the permanent magnets that you would see on a DC motor, you actually have two field windings instead around the outside of the motor. And this suppression capacitor on the right here just goes across the two brushes to try and reduce the amount of noise that's being emitted. And then we have this curious device, which I haven't actually seen one in this kind of form factor before. But this is just a filter and very similar to these types of things that you might have seen fitted to devices before. So these are inlet filters, but what they actually do is they're designed to prevent the noise that's being created by the device coming back down the AC cable and being radiated. So these are being used to control the radiated and conducted emissions from the device as a result of it being connected to the AC via a power cable. And this, if you look at the diagram on the side here, is very, very similar However, these filters use an earth connection for this pair of capacitors here. So you can see we've got the, the line and the neutral, uh, and then we've got two suppression capacitors connected to the mains earth, and then that gets picked up on this side. Uh, and it basically conducts all of the noise to the earth conductor. Now on a power tool like this, these are class two devices, so we don't actually have any earth conductor at all. Uh, but the diagram is very similar, and what they're doing is referencing that earth terminal to one part on the motor here. So we've got the filter. In fact, first of all, we've got a power switch, a double pole switch here. We've got the filter arrangement, so a common mode choke, a X2 filter across, uh, capacitor, sorry, across the line and the neutral, and then two um, X2 capacitors with the center part connected to this part on the motor. And the way that it appears to be controlling the speed of the motor is actually by uh, controlling the waveform into one of these field windings. Now, in something like a hand blender or uh, uh, possibly a hairdryer, that kind of thing where you have multiple speed controls, but they are switched, so you might have speed one, two, and three, what you'd often see is multiple taps on one of the field windings, and you'd switch between those, and that changes the speed of the motor. Now, they're using an electronic speed control here to control uh, the waveform into uh, this winding here and that gives us the effect of controlling the speed of the motor. So I've given the insides of the sander a good clean. I gave it a scrub with some brake cleaner and also blasted it out with the air compressor. There was a lot of carbon deposit or uh, soot or whatever it was. Uh, when this actually blew up it was blasting for quite a long time with a lot of heat so we have scorched some of the plastics a little bit but I've got rid of the majority of the debris. And there was a lot of metallized paper deposits all inside the machine. So this uh, appears to have something very similar to one of these reefer capacitors that are well known for exploding in older pieces of equipment. The failure mode was exactly the same and you can see all the bits of paper and all the metallized parts inside this. So this was actually made in 2004, but it's got very, very low working hours on here, probably about two or three hours at the most. Um, so it looks like these break down just with age. You don't e even need to have used it that much for these capacitors to start failing. So um, it's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, that's the way it is with some of these components. So I'm going to try and assemble this back with these new components. It looks like one of the parts in the exploded uh, diagram that Bosch provides is actually incorrect compared to how this is all wired up. So. Uh, I'm kind of just going to replace one lead at a time to make sure I don't get everything muddled up. So I think we've got everything back in place there. I noticed the crimps were very slightly longer on this new filter, so I did end up adding just a little bit of heat shrink sleeving, just where it was getting a little bit close to one of the other terminals. But I think that's all ready to go back together again. I just need to attach the mains cable here and also the cord grip. So it turns out we did actually blow the 13 amp fuse in the plug as well. I've replaced that now and we have a fully functional sander. So that's random orbit mode only. And then we can twiddle this red knob here 
and this forces rotation at the same time. And the forced rotation means that we can take off a lot more material when we're sanding in a shorter period of time. So a relatively straightforward repair, uh, just basically one of these filters that had exploded. Uh, but fortunately it was repairable and the damage wasn't terminal. Uh, as I said, I do quite like this sander. I've got many much newer ones, but this one is really nice for that forced rotation feature. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters, and don't forget to visit JLC PCB if you're thinking about getting some PCBs made. Hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, thanks for watching.